then. I think we're we're ready. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to call to order the uh, regularly scheduled meeting of the Beloit City Council. It is now 7 p or 7:02 p.m. Uh, on Monday, August 17th, uh, 2015. Uh, roll call. All council members are present. All right. Thank you. Let's. Uh, shall we please stand for number two, the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Um, special order of the day and announcements. We have none, so we'll move on to item four, which are public hearings. Uh, item 4A. Is a resolution authorizing a conditional use permit to allow an outdoor seating area with alcohol in a PUD planned unit development district for the property located at 2900 Milwaukee Road. Mrs. Christensen. Um, Noodles and Company will be opening soon in a building that was previously occupied by Arby's on Milwaukee Road. They are proposing, they have proposed the construction of a 16 by 24 foot concrete patio on the northwest side of the building facing Milwaukee Road. Um, the furniture in the outdoor seating area will include four to five tables with umbrellas and chairs with seating for 16 customers. Um, the staff report does include um, a kind of zoomed in on the site plan so you could see the seating arrangement which you couldn't really see from the site plan otherwise. Um, so you can see where the outdoor seating area is and included in the packet were actually photographs of the tables and chairs that they're proposing. Um, they are also proposing, um, they are proposing to sell alcohol in the outdoor seating as well. Um, and the PUD did allow uses w which were allowed in the C3 district. So the indoor alcohol was actually allowed under that, but the outdoor seating area and the outdoor alcohol um, is the subject of the conditional use. State law does regulate liquor sales within 300 feet of the main entrance of any school, hospital, or church. Um, the statute doesn't apply to restaurants, however, there isn't any within that vicinity. Planning Commission did review this item on August 5th and voted unanimously to recommend approval, subject to the four conditions which are listed in the staff report, which is that this conditional use authorizes Noodles and Company to serve food and beverages within a concrete patio area on the northwest side of the building. Prior to serving alcoholic beverages in the outdoor area, the applicant shall obtain an alcohol beverage license that includes the outdoor seating area. The outdoor gate must be marked as an exit. If the building has a fire alarm, a strobe needs to be located on the patio near the door into the building in order to alert customers on the patio to use the outside exit. And then our standard condition about major changes coming back through this public pro process and minor changes being able to be approved administratively. Thank you. I'd like to open the public hearing on item 4A. Anyone wishing to speak on item 4A, please approach the podium and state your name and address. Second call for persons to come forward and speak on item 4A. Third and final call for persons to come forward and speak on item 4A. Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing on item 4A. Uh, do I have a, a motion to approve to get the case? Moved by Kincaid, second by Lubke. Do we have any questions or comments? Hearing none, I'll call the matter. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Item passes 7-0. Item 4B. Is a resolution approving the vacation of Tuckaway Lane in the city of Beloit, Rock County, Wisconsin. Madam Director. I feel like you've seen this a couple of times. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so you did amend the PUD. Um, master land use plan to allow this the assisted living facility um, you did review and approve the development agreement which would allow the movement of the utilities and allow them to start beginning construction of the assisted living facility um, Tuckaway Lane or a stub of Tuckaway Lane was platted back when we were doing Park Meadow when it was planned to be single-family and multi-family residential so there's a little stub street which shows up on this kind of air photo um, they are requesting that it be vacated. That will is proposed to be the location of their driveway. There is a photo which kind of shows what it looks like on the land. Um, so they will still access through that tuckaway lane, but it will no longer be a right of way. So we will no longer be responsible for maintaining it, plowing it, or any of that. It will go to them for um, them to review. 
Um, this did go out. This we, public notices were distributed. Um, this came to Pine Commission at their last meeting on August 5th, um, and they did vote unanimously to recommend approval of the vacation. Um, there is a request for utility easement, so utility easement will be maintained over it. So any utilities we have, we will have an easement over the utilities that do remain in the Tuckaway Lane right of way. Thank you. I'd like to open the public hearing on item 4B. And when anyone wishing to speak on item 4B, please approach the podium and state your name and address. Second call for persons to come forward and speak on item 4B. Third and final call for persons to come forward and speak on item 4B. Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing on item 4B. Uh, do we have a motion for approval? I move approval. Second. Moved by DeForest and second by Sloniker. Do we have any questions or comments on item 4B? Hearing none, I'll call the matter. All in favor of uh, approving 4B, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Item passes 7-0. Item 4C. 4C is the first reading of an ordinance amending the zoning district map in the city of Beloit. Madam Director. Um, Craig Zastro, the executive pastor of Central Christian Church, has applied for the rezoning of 2460 Milwaukee Road, which is the main church parcel, and 1420 Office Park Lane, which is the detention area that they have. 2460 Milwaukee Road is currently zoned C1, and 1420 Office Park Lane is zoned M2, because it at one time was part of the industrial park. Um, the comprehensive plan that was adopted in 2008 actually showed this for institutional and community service type uses. Um, they never requested the change for the rezoning. We didn't go through and initiate rezoning everything that was a little off in terms of the zoning. Um, at this point, they're coming forward to rezone both parcels to PLI to be consistent with the compre comprehensive plan, the future land use map that's contained within. Um, the state law does say that if local government establish or amends an official zoning map, that the actions should be consistent with the comp plan, so this would be consistent with the comp plan. The PLI is a special purpose district that's intended to accommodate major public and quasi-public uses, such as park schools, cemeteries, municipal buildings, and religious institutions. Um, there are no land use changes being proposed at this time, but it would formally legalize the church's accessory uses, uses such as the daycare center and the other community service uses that are currently um, located on site. Um, Central Christian Church did request that the City Council suspend the rules, um, and Plan Commission reviewed this item on August 5th and voted 4-1 to recommend approval. Right. Uh, I'd like to open the public hearing on item 4C. Anyone wishing to come forward and speak on item 4C, please approach the podium and state your name and address. Good evening. Good evening. Craig Zastro, 1631 East Ridge. I'm the executive pastor at Central Christian Church, and uh, we're requesting this zoning change. Uh, as Ms. Christensen said, we do not plan any change in land use. Um, that's it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else wishing to come forward and speak on item 4C? Second call for persons to come forward and speak on item 4C. Third and final call for persons to come forward and speak on item 4C. Hearing and seeing none, I'll close the public hearing on item 4C. And uh, do we have any questions or comments before we uh, make a motion to lay this over? All right, do we have a motion to lay over? Motion. Second. Okay. Moved by uh, Sloniker, second by uh, Lubke. All in favor of laying this item over until the next meeting, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Item is laid over to the next meeting. Item five is citizens' participation. We have reached the, the point of the meeting for members of the public to speak to the council about issues that are coming before us or may come before us in the future. The council will not act on any requests this evening unless the item you are speaking about is already on our agenda, but we may act on requests at a future meeting or may refer the speaker to staff for assistance. We ask that you hold your comments to three minutes or less and avoid making personal attacks. Uh, we. Uh, don't have anyone who signed up to speak under citizens' participation, so do we have anyone in the audience who wishes to speak? Please approach the podium and state your name and address. Second call for persons to come forward and speak under citizens' participation. Third and final call for persons to come forward and speak under citizens' participation. 
Hearing none, I'll close citizens' participation. We will move on to the consent agenda, item six. All items listed under the consent agenda are considered routine and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion on these items unless a council member so requests, in which event the item will be removed from the general order of business and considered at this point in the agenda. Do we have any councillors wishing to remove something from the consent agenda tonight? Hearing none, the consent agenda will consist of items 6A through 6G. Do I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. Moved by Lubke, second by Kincaid. All in favor of uh, approval of this consent agenda, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Consent agenda passes 7-0. Item seven is or our ordinances, and there are none tonight. Appointments, there are none. So we move on to councillor activities and upcoming events, and let's go ahead and get started with uh, Councillor Hendricks. Good evening. Um, I'll make it quick. I was able to see a few, or well, visit a few National Night Out block parties, which were, which is always a good time. Um, it's my second year as a council member going out, so I usually just go to my church, but it's good to go out and see other ones as well. Um, and then I just got back from Florida with my cheerleaders who represented Beloit and Wisconsin very well. They brought back a trophy and the cheer stick, which is a thing. <laughs> and it's huge in cheer world. So uh, while it, it wasn't actually a vacation because I was working, but I was proud that they represented the city well um, and the state. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Sloniker. Yes, I also had the opportunity to go to a few block parties at National Night Out, and it was a nice event. That's all. Okay. All right, thank you. Councillor Kelly. Well, uh, National Night Out seems like a long time ago. Uh, we actually hosted National Night Out, and uh, we had a great turnout. Uh, we had people that we've never haven't seen in years, if, if just around the block. Um, so nice that we might just do it again. Okay, good. Well. Councillor Lubke. I was able to be down at the uh, street dance, which was fantastic. I, I was there about five, and we had people there before the 5:30 opening. And it was a steady stream of people uh, until 9, 9.30. The beauty of this is it brings the entire city together. It, it, bring, it, it shows why Beloit is such a great city to raise a family in. Uh, all types of people there. I saw at least three class reunions, uh, people coming back. Uh, wonderful event. I, I had three or four people say, why can't they do this twice in the summertime, you know, beginning and end? It's, this is great. The weather cooperated, didn't rain. Um, just a, a wonderful event celebrating the people of Beloit coming together. Uh, today I was fortunate and honored to be invited to be a, a speaker at the uh, Merrill Community Center uh, golf outing at the club and um, I was able to represent the city and welcome people to that event that raises uh, funds for the Merrill Community Center which is uh, uh, helps many people in Beloit and many youth and uh, kind of neat the youth of uh, Beloit that were many that were served by the Merrill Center were there to thank the golfers that's all I have thank you Councillor DeForest thank you well, first I'd like to welcome the Beloit College students um, they're making their way back to Beloit or here for the first time and just want to encourage you to get involved in the community that's certainly how I first developed my passion and love for this great place so welcome to them and wanted to highlight uh, two particular events that are coming up that I would encourage you to consider um, being involved in uh, one I want to highlight one of our our city's commissions or boards and that is the Equal Opportunities Commission and uh, that meeting is uh, Wednesday the 19th at 545 at City Hall and we will actually be working on developing a plan to address impediments to fair housing and so that's a great opportunity for you to find out a little bit more about what the city plans to do to make sure that housing um, 
is equitable for all residents in the city. And then I'm very excited about the series of listening tour sessions that will be held. Um, the first in the series will be happening soon, and those will be an opportunity for um, city staff and city councilors to meet with stakeholders in the community to receive input and feedback from them. So I'm thrilled that we are going out to the community and meeting with them um, because sometimes it can be intimidating for them to come here to us. So uh, thank you to City Manager Curtis Luther and, uh, and to the staff for helping to organize those listening tour events. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Kincaid. <clears throat> I was on vacation and missed two farmer's markets in Beloit. I, in Michigan, I saw a lot of farmer's markets. Some were very, very good. I can tell you none of which measured up to Beloit. So uh, there was a, uh, I, I tried to give them advice on how they could improve it, but uh, <laughs> you know, who knows. Good for you. Um, that's all I have, Mr. Uh, President. Thank you. <clears throat> and I have none. I've, I'm far too busy to be able to get around. Okay, so, um, all right, we'll move on to item uh, 10, which is city manager's presentation. There is not, isn't one tonight. So we'll move on to 11 reports from boards and city officers, 11A. A resolution authorizing the city of Beloit to withdraw from the local government property ins insurance fund. Mr. Miller. Good evening. Good evening. Um, as you all know, currently the city insures its property through the Wisconsin local government uh, property insurance fund, the LGPIF for short. Um, during state budget preparations, Governor Walker had put forth a proposal to eliminate this fund from the state budget um, as an effort to save money um, for the state. Uh, just before that uh, budget bill was signed, the um, Joint Finance Committee removed that line item from the budget, but um, uh, at least for 2016, and then they're going to phase out that fund in future years. So in... Um, we could technically stay in the fund if we so choose, but in doing so, we would have to probably pay somewhere in the range of 100% increases in our premiums for property insurance. Um, so after learning of the proposal by Governor Walker, um, there were three uh, companies that uh, joined together, one of them being CIVMIC, the city's village's mutual insurance company, uh, the League of Wisconsin Municipalities Mutual Insurance Company, and the Wisconsin Municipal Mutual Insurance Company. They joined together to form a company called uh, the Municipal Property Insurance Company, or MPIC. Um, and what we'd be looking to do is uh, look into the opportunity to go into um, the MPIC uh, company to have them insure our property for 2016. Um, in order to do that, we'd have to first withdraw from the LGPIF and so by state statute, um, we have to get council approval in order to do that. So that's why we're here tonight, um, to get your approval to withdraw <coughs> from that fund. Thank you. Yep. All right. Uh, do we have a motion to approve the resolution? Motion to approve. Second. Moved by Lubke, second by Sloniker. Any questions or comments? All right, then. I'll call the matter. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Item passes. Uh, seven to zero and for our most controversial thing this evening um, adjournment <laughs> do we have a motion to adjourn i'll second <laughs> Moved by Slotiker. controversy <laughs> <It says> second <laughs> by <laughs> councillor deforest all in favor say aye aye, aye. any opposed we are adjourned aye.